So, what we have here is a solar charging station, right? Now you have Sally and Bob, okay? And we have their car. Now go ahead and turn on the car so it drives a little. And then switch it the other way on the yellow thing. The other way. All right. So it goes back and forth. Now when it's doing that, when it's running, you see how it's running? This number is going down, right? Yeah. The joules are going down. You see that? So now we have, looks like 91, 90. You see that? 89, 88. Right? It's using up energy. What we're going to do is we're going to run our program here. Now look here. Once we run this, ready? The station is ready. See there's a little happy face. Now, there's an RFID chip, look. There's an RFID chip here. This chip gets scanned by this scanner, this sensor. And this will tell the computer whose car it is. This is Sally. So if we drive this car to a gas station, right? If we drive this car toward a gas station, when it drives up, see the chip? Now look what happened here. It says, welcome Sally. Now it says, plug in. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. You're going to plug in that cable, the flexi cable, into Sally's car right over here from the other side, right? Ready? Okay, now plug it in next to Sally here. Plug it all the way in, okay? All the way in. Now, once it's plugged in, that's okay. <laughs> Let's put Sally back. Once it's plugged in, see there's a meter on the display, you see that? Now, the meter will charge Sally's car, but what we need to do is we need to also plug in this power station, this cord. So you need to remove this cord, extend it. See this? Okay, take that cord and let's plug this into with this cord together. Other way. The darker one on top, the darker one on top. There you go. And just snap them. Got it? More. Click. Make sure it clicks. Got it? It's kind of hard. Good. Now, now what's happening is Sally's car is actually charging. Look at this number here. What does it say? Okay, now, what's happening here is it's charging. So you see 86, 86, 87. What's charging it, Michael? It's still right. What's charging it is that light. Our sun is charging it via this panel. It says 87 now, right? And using this sun, we can charge it. See, it says 87. And see this needle? See this meter? Uh -huh. See how it's improving, right? It's yeah. increasing. So the sun is actually charging this. So this is using solar power in order to charge up the car. Yes. All right. Now, look at this sensor. This is blinking blue. Once this goes to over 90, it's going to start blinking green. Right? Because our program is going to recognize that there's more energy now. Once it gets to 100, the light is going to be solid. What we have here is we have a solar station. Now, we have two cars. These cars are able to drive back and forth. Very cool here. Okay, you guys seen this before? Yeah. As they're driving back and forth, they're basically using up some energy. Now, here we're getting to some programming. As the car pulls up to the solar station, the solar station scans it and recognizes whose car that is. Now, notice that this here is Sally's car. So I recognize that that was Sally rather than Bob. Now, 
instead of pressing enter, what you actually could do is simply plug in this meter. Observe what happens. Notice that I'm pressing no buttons whatsoever. Look at the light. Notice that I pressed nothing, yet the car got scanned. I didn't press any buttons. Now, the gas station, the charging station, solar charging station, recognized that this particular car only has 97 joules of energy, right? And therefore it needs a little charge. Now, if this car kept running, I'm gonna just keep running it here for a second just to show you that it would recognize real time how many joules of energy are left. You guys see that screen? So again, think about programmatically how that would happen. Now look at the light. The green light just switched to blue. What that means is that we're now below 90. Okay, so if we're less than 90% energy, we're now showing a different color light, just to indicate that the tank is not really as full as we'd like it to be. Now to charge it, we have our sun turned on, right? So what we would need is we would need to connect the charging cable from Sally's car to the charging station, like so. And once connected, the charging should start. Now, this is solar conversion, so it's much slower than, for example, uh, wind power conversion from a strong wind or the hand generation. You guys remember the charts we were doing? Now, notice again, as we go past 90, observe the light. Turns green, so again, this is a real-time scan. So basically, once, once the meter charges this up, we'll, we'll see We'll see the numbers change. Again, here we got 91, right? This will go all the way up to 100, and the car will detect when it's up to 100. Okay, couple of questions. First, first, can somebody tell me how the station recognized that this was Sally's car and not Bob's? Yep. Well, it has a microchip on the side, and um, his or scanner right here, it reads the microchip. Right, everybody with that? specific kind of like a barcode. Right, so microchip here? Yeah. Right. So basically if we swap those chips, it would have thought that Sally's Bob. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. So this is uh, just an idea where maybe in the future gas stations could scan your account or scan your car by a license plate, etc. That way you don't have to actually pay with a credit card that it already has your information stored much faster for processing and just pull up, you know, and you guess up, etc. The license plate would have to be something that's a lot more attached to the car than it is now. So somehow it just knows you. So you have some sort of an RFID tag in your car that's a digital license plate that cannot be stolen unless it's stolen with you, right? So uh, it can recognize it can recognize uh, who pulled up to the station just based on that RFID chip. Now after that, I, I plugged it in. And by the way, watch now what happens when it goes to 100. So now we're at 99, right? We're at 99. As it goes to 100, the station will recognize that this goes to 100. Right? Full charge. No, light turns. 99. Light turns. Light. Light turns green. And there's apparently a small button I'm holding, right? You see that? Yeah. So what happened is I exited the loop too soon, right? <laughs> okay. Now, can somebody tell me how the car recognized that it was plugged in? How did the station recognize that the car was plugged in? I didn't press any buttons. You guys saw that, right? I just plugged in the cable. How did that happen? Any idea, anybody? I plugged in a car, I did not press a single button, and my program changed just based on me plugging in the wire. Um, maybe you had a loop without any loop locks, so then it activated as soon as you were connected. How would you scan for something if you can get connected? This is written in NXTG. I'm not using any blocks you haven't seen before. Except maybe for the trans display block that shows this uh, this uh, meter here, which I'm not asking any questions of. I'm gonna show you guys one way that we can detect, that we can detect when something is plugged in. For example, power specifically here using power meters, so that we can automatically recognize it. This is very useful. <laughs> This is useful, we can use this in FLL, for example, when we're plugging in a different sensor. Turn blue. We can automatically, yeah? Okay, awesome. We can add that means we're above 20, right? Mm -hmm. So we can automatically detect 
if we have a particular type of sensor connected, we can automatically find that we have a water plugged in. There's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do by automatic detection. Automatic detection is used in a couple of different things in real life. For example, plug and play. When we plug in things into our USB ports and our computers, usually we don't have to press anything. It just knows that we plugged it in. When we plug in our robot, we don't have to scan for it usually. It just kind of knows that the robot is plugged in. Computers automatically recognize it. Right? So something there tells the computer that we're plugging something in. We can do this with power too. This is very convenient if a gas station knew how much gas we actually needed instead of the current situation where we simply gas up our car and see how it basically it overfills or uh, right, it spills out a little or, or, or the gas shuts off. It'd be convenient if it could hook up to the car and actually know if we even need gas. Especially if we're talking about energy because there is not a tank to fill, right? How much know, how, how do you know, how would you know how much battery you have filled it up? Right, so it'd be cool if the gas station, kind of like this, knew whether or not you need a charge or how much charge you need. Make sense? So this would be a useful thing to, to be able to do is automatically detect things. So one of the ways we can do that 